it on. Hi everybody, it's Dara, and I am here. I miss you guys. It's Sunday. It's Fun Day Sunday with Renee, and I have Jada in the house, and I am just always, you know, making food last minute because I'm busy with my day. We went to the festival in Venice, and we came home, and I'm like, what do I have in the refrigerator? And it just so happens that I had kale, which Renee was kind enough to massage for me with olive oil. And that just means massaging it to break down the digestive enzymes so that you can digest the kale more easily. If you want, you can steam your kale, but you need to do something to it, either blend it or massage it because it does have the uneasy to digest enzyme, enzymes on the outside of it. So this basically has kale, avocado, um, I didn't add any salt, I didn't add lime, I didn't add lemon, I didn't add a citrus, which I'm going to do. I have these beautiful limes, maybe some chopped onion, and some garlic would be nice, uh, some chopped walnuts, pine nuts are really nice, pine nuts and cranberries, pine nuts and raisins are really nice with um, kale salad, that's my dog's making some noise. They like to wrestle with each other. It's very cute. <laughs> Shh. So, I am squeezing the lime. And I'm thinking about <laughs> now they're racing each other. Can, can, you, can you help? So basically, I'm thinking, well, if I serve Hene something that's hearty like kale and it's oniony and garlicky, but after I eat something like that, I definitely want... I definitely want, Jay? I'm trying. Come on. <laughs> I definitely want uh, something chocolatey after. I once heard that one of the only things that will remove or get rid of a garlic flavor in your mouth is chocolate. And for me, it works. So we have, thanks honey. Where'd you put them? Outside. Outside? You do? They'll be fine. Fresh air. I'm putting a little bit of this pepper Luchaner hot paprika, hot paprika on the kale. Jade is here, Renee is walking by. How does it look on camera, Renee, good? Looks good. Okay, so I'm making you something delicious and you've inspired me to make you dessert. So you're gonna have dessert after too. And if you get inspired and you wanna say anything, feel free to show up. <laughs> Just anything you wanna say. I wanna talk about um, addiction today. I want to talk about the fact that we can be addicted to many, many things, and it's not the thing that you're addicted to that's the issue. It's all the behaviors surrounding it. It's the ways in which it affects your life, because it's not the thing. If we are, let's say, addicted to cigarettes, then it's the thought about when we're going to get our next, next cigarette, or are we going to smell like the smoke, and what if we do? and we're going to upset somebody and there's so much like it affects so much of our lives that it's never just the thing so i think the best thing to do when we're addicted to something um, no matter what it is is to try and identify why it is we use that as a crutch what it is that what's the root cause for and it's funny, like somebody said, well, would, would my life get better if I have self-esteem? Will I not then sabotage my relationships? Will my life get better if I quit smoking? And the, question, the answer to that question is yes, absolutely yes. Because when we, just like when we cure one disease, we cure them all. When we cure the, the, the root of something that's causing us to do something to harm ourselves, then there's so many things that are going to get better in our lives that we can't even imagine really. So we don't have to think about all that at once when we want to stop doing something, whether it's eating gluten or smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol. We just need to take our first step. You know, we need to just say, okay, today's the day I'm going to do one thing um, in the effort to, to live the life that I see myself living, not want to be living. We don't want to be the person who wants something. We want to live as if we envision ourselves exactly as we are meant to be and our highest potential so that means that if you are thinking of being physically fit picture yourself at your most physically fit moment or picture someone else's body and adopt that as your own 
uh, provided it, it's somewhere in the scheme of where you're at. But the thing is, or not, just picture it, but the thing is is that we have to uh, do positive languaging and we need to say, I can, I will, I am, I do. Not I'm trying or I will tomorrow. It's today. It's now. You know, all we have is now. So if you decide you quit smoking now, you quit. If you decide you quit eating gluten and you're only going to eat raw food, so be it. And for this minute, you're a raw foodist. You're a non-smoker. So, you know, I sat on a plane with this wonderful woman um, and we talked and we were talking about food and she has a farm and most of her, her food is just this beautiful organic produce and then she eats some other things. And for the six hours we were on the plane together, and about five hours in, I had been sharing my chocolate with her and whatever raw food goodies that I had brought with me. And I said, congratulations, you're a raw foodist. You have been so for the past five hours. And she laughed. And you just never know. Do minute by minute. And the motivation that you can do it is going to spur you on. The better you feel, the more you'll continue doing the beautiful and good, very green behavior. So. That's what I have to say on that. Uh, just that you can and you will. And the best, the very best thing to remember is that sometimes the most sensitive and the most beautiful people are the ones with addictions because their sensitivities cause them to want to numb themselves. And without the proper tools, we didn't, we weren't, we weren't given tools about how to meditate and do sound healing and to get sunshine and to eat this kind of food. Um, if we eat this kind of food, it's very hard to be depressed. But we are taught other ways. Watch TV, take a pill, drink some alcohol, smoke a cigarette, num, 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 num. And then pretty soon that's a habit and we're addicted. So the best things we could do is just reboot, start to reorganize our behavior, reorganize our thought patterns, catch ourselves in our, in our negative thinking and just switch it over. It's as simple as that because our actions are dictated by our thoughts. Okay? We don't make do an action without thinking something before. So if we kind of we'll, if we work with our thoughts, our actions will improve as well. That makes sense. So we have the kale salad for Renee, which I think is delicious. I'm going to try it and then I'm going to make her dessert. Renee, how you doing? Is she listening to? I see her smiling. <laughs> okay, so I think she's gonna like some walnuts in there because Renee likes brain food. There's a name for the study. I forget the name of it, but there's a study of food um, and what the food looks like is what what body part the food looks like is what it's helpful for for your for your body. And this is a little brain. This walnut looks like a brain. So therefore, if you want to have extra brain power, sprinkle in some already soaked two hours, two to four hours for walnuts at least, and dehydrated, or not, if you don't have a dehydrator, just use them soaked. Um, but if you want them crunchy, you want to dry them. I'm happy to tell you that at Whole Foods, they are selling Living Intentions products in the bulk at our Whole Foods. If they do not have it at your Whole Foods, request it. But Living Intentions soaks sprouts, um, another word for soaks, the walnuts, and then dehydrates them, and you can buy them already done. And that's much easier. So we have walnuts and kale, and if I had cranberries or, ra cranberries or raisins, you know what I could do? And this is how raw foodists need to think. What can I substitute for something chewy and sweet and a little tart? And I will tell you that I have mulberries. So I will put mulberries in the salad. And now, dun dun dun, for dessert. I have avocado, a beautiful reed avocado. I have cacao. I can take this, this, and honey, or agave, or maple syrup, or coconut sugar, and mash them up to make a chocolate pudding. It's the easiest thing in the world. So I'm going to do that right now, right before your very eyes. It was hot at the festival today, lots of people. It was fun though, we had a good time. It was fun day Sunday instead of our Saturday Saturday. 
<laughs> One day, I said, oh, it was Saturday when they were hanging out on a Saturday. And we ate a lot of fat. Oh, my gosh. Somebody asked me, I thought you were 80-10-10. I was definitely 80-10-10 for a good 30, maybe 45 days, leaning towards a low-fat diet, which I still believe to be, as I'm holding the avocado, I still believe to be the most detoxifying diet. When you cut down on your fat, and I have theories on this if you want to hear. My theory is that if you want to cut down on your fat and you eat a lot of fruit, you need to not eat a lot of fat, then there's a really beautiful thing you can do for yourself if you are not absolutely stuck on being 100% raw. So you eat your salad during the day, you eat your fruits during the day, and then at night you want a big salad. Well, the way to make a salad palatable is to add fat. A way to, another way to make a salad palatable is to steam or cook or lightly saute in coconut oil vegetables. So let's say, I think I did this the other day, last week. I made a big, beautiful salad, and then in a, so a pan with coconut oil, not a lot, or just water, put cabbage, eggplant, onions, garlic, and cook them, not too much until they're dead, but cook them to, to break down the digestive enzymes, make them easier to digest. More importantly, have them be warm. That goes on top of your cool salad and it satisfies instead of having to add the fat. So that is a trick I wanted to tell you about that I think is really helpful. Now, if you're the other, the other school of thought where you're not worried about the fat, but you're cutting down your fruit sugars, then that is fine too. So you really just have to do what works best with, for you and the only yeah. way to know is to intuit for yourself and once you intuit and you say that resonates with me, I would like to try that, then do it. And I'm making a mash. If you really wanted to do this uh, very creamy, very smooth, which I still can do, is I could put it in my mini prep food processor but for the sake of showing you how simple it can be without a machine. Ah, somebody wants to know how to make chocolate pudding so easy without a machine. So for all of you bachelors out there, half an avocado, some cacao powder you can get online or Whole Foods, a little bit of honey, a pinch of salt if you want to bring out the sweetness. And that's the basics. You can add vanilla, you can add reishi mushroom, you can add... Vanilla? Vanilla. Yes, you can add, I'm gonna add a little more chocolate. So, I heard the peanut gallery. <laughs> vanilla, I heard vanilla. Anything else the peanut gallery wants to say? Reishi. Renee. Hey, 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 Renee. I call Renee and, and we rhymes for her. Um, reishi mushroom. So I'm hearing that you might like a little vanilla and a little reishi in yours. Would you? <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Okay. Anytime there's a chance to add superfoods. So this pudding can be a great carrier for reishi mushroom, for different kinds of mushrooms and tonic herbs that help boost your immune system, make you a more peaceful spirit, um, help you to be more uplifted, stragglers, and substantial. Okay, so, um, Renee, is there anything you want to say? Uh, Today? Mm -hmm. I found that, really that what you said about addiction was really good. You did? Yeah. Is there anything I forgot about Pretty addiction? Much covered it all. I mean, in well, a nutshell. I couldn't possibly cover everything about addiction. But yes, it's an important topic because there's things that we're all addicted to. And we can't blame other people. We have to take responsibility, um, switch it over to something healthier, you know, a little exercise, uh, getting sunshine, taking your time. If you have an addiction to food, then use the opportunity to love your food and put all of your energy into obsessing about bad things about food into how can I create the most beautiful food. So food can be enormously and should be enormously I'm still talking. Enormously important. So we got reishi mushroom. 
which calms the heart, tonifies the lungs. So for anybody having chest issues, lung issues, supports the liver and cardio function. Reishi is just a magical mushroom. I wouldn't want to live without reishi. So I'm going to put some in. It's definitely bitter. So I like adding it to my sweet chocolate because it gives a little bit of bitterness. And I have some vanilla. And I think, you know, we all can become addicted to so many things. And, and they're really, yeah, I think from what I can say is that the best thing to do is to obviously get help. You know, there's people who study and study, just like I practice raw food. There's people who practice how to help people, you know, conquer their addictions. Oh, I know what I was going to say. This is the beautiful thing, is that the, some of the most sensitive, most beautiful, most artistic, most amazing people end up being addicted to things. And then the most beautiful thing that can come out of the addiction is the breaking of it, the mastering it, the challenging it, the overcoming it, do changing to be your most beautiful, most healthy self, and then helping other people. Because sometimes, I, mostly every single t time that something happens with me, to me, something I called in, some situation happens, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it brought me closer to, closer to an event that would help me to understand what somebody else might be going through. So it makes me have an even broader range in which to help others. So if you get to conquer something so you know, intense as an addiction and you get to the other side, you get to help other people and nothing could be more fulfilling and rewarding. That's what I wanted to say. So really good things can come out of it. I hear the dogs. They're free. Okay, so I'm adding coconut sugar just because I want it, I don't know, I want it a little sweeter. It might be a little gritty. And we're good. Do any of the girls here want to come say a quick hi? You will? Oh my god, this is my best day ever. Aside from Mother's Day, thank you. Jade Rose is in the house. This is my 13-year-old daughter who is taller than me. And... Um, is doing her homework and she just did me a huge favor. I thank you for bringing all those things upstairs. That was really sweet. And she just had spinach and she had Tulsi rose tea. You like that? Yeah. Why? Because it tastes really good and it's relaxing. Tulsi is like an Indian Ayurvedic herb that helps you to relax. Can I say something on addiction? Please do. Well, this might not be the best thing to say on our raw food channel, mm -hmm. but a lot of kids my age are like, you could say addicted to junk food and things that are really bad for you. Yes. And all the bad companies disguise it with like fun packaging and it tastes really good. But from a kid's point of view about addiction, especially smoking and alcohol, mm -hmm. I don't understand it because like I've had a sip of alcohol and I just know, I can just imagine what tobacco tastes like. And none of those things taste good. Right. And I think it's more of a reason to be able to say, oh, I like junk food because it tastes good. Mm -hmm. But alcohol and tobacco is more of a numbing, escaping sense mm -hmm. where it's more just not dealing with your own problems. And I think food, it's like, oh, it tastes good. I'll just eat it. And it's convenient in a drive through But like alcohol and drugs, it doesn't taste good. It, the only thing it is is something numbing right so, so you you can understand the junk food more because it's food and it tastes good yeah can you understand how that can become numbing to some people after time no I just want to me personally it. right you don't have an addictive personality and you she also she knows moderation and when to stop um, but it is so easily available the junk food right yeah and they make it seem like so it's whatever and like they could say, oh, it's this many calories. And you're like, oh, okay. Oh, but yes, that doesn't mean do. it's good. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people say, like, oh, well, it's this many calories. It says on the box it's less calories. Mm -hmm. But calories, like, less calories doesn't mean it's good for you because there's other things in it that substitute. And, right. like, even the gluten-free cupcakes I've had, like, what they do is they substitute mm -hmm. the lack of gluten mm -hmm. And they just add extra, like, butter, fat, sugar mm -hmm. to make it taste good and to make it taste the same. Right. Right. 
Grandma Sylvia used to have a lot of sugar-free products, but they had to add a lot of fat and they had to add a lot of aspartame to make it taste good. Um, so sometimes these things in pretty packaging are not, most of the times, not what they, they appear. So, um, yeah. yeah, so junk food is what I would call a societally acceptable um, addiction. This well, is a drug. what mm -hmm. I would do is if you really do like eating a lot of that junk, mm -hmm. what I do mm -hmm. is I make a list of things that are kind of meeting it halfway between healthy and junk food. Mm -hmm. So like maybe I would write down some sort of gluten-free sugary bar mm -hmm. or maybe like sushi because I can have sushi, it's not gluten. Mm -hmm. Like certain things that are just kind of meeting it halfway between healthy and not. That are not that awful, but they're not. So that's really what she's saying is that she makes the best choice towards the best choice she can at that moment. Right? Yeah. Right. And when I don't have a choice, maybe I will have a little bit of something. Like if there's no choice. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it's hard because I don't want to be rude at a friend's house or right. there's nothing else to eat, and I don't want to come home hungry. Right, and you're not, she's not an adult who can prepare, and, and so I think just even being aware at 13 of all of these things is amazing. So you should give yourself a lot of credit for the knowledge that you have retained. And um, when you're eating something, I know guilt feels bad, mm -hmm. but I do appreciate that I do feel guilty if I eat something bad, because at least I'm aware that right. it was bad. Right. I don't want you to be guilty, though, because... But I'd rather feel guilty about what I'm eating so that I know... It registers. It's yeah. Like, I don't want to eat too much, and I'm not going to... You almost probably... I think you said this to your friend Oscar earlier, is that when you eat something, you eat a small amount of it, and you also know to moderate or to switch over to something healthy. You balance it out later. Like, let's say I had a whole weekend of just not so good. Mm -hmm. Then that whole week, and probably more after that, I would just balance it out with healthy foods. So, are you glad that I don't enforce, like, the most strict diet? I mean... Yeah. Right? Do you think it's better than the parents? Like, I think it would make me kind of socially struggling if mm -hmm. I had to eat, like, so strict. I think you would go there and gorge on whatever they have if you had them strict. Yeah. Right? I think, I think that we have a good balance here of education and the knowledge that each person gets to choose, you know, when they become a certain age. Um, you don't have to try this pudding, but it's, it's good. <laughs> I, I won't make her work. do that. Okay, thank you so much for popping in, my sweet cheeks. Mm -hmm. Have a hug. Have a hug. One hug. One hug. <laughs> she has to. One hug. You do it. You do it. I love my honey. Mwah. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, so I have Renee's chocolate pudding, I have kale salad, and um, life is good around here. We got the girls in the house. Ru come show Ruth. Come, come, Renee. You've got to say hi. You look at the person who do that. Look at, yeah, Ruby. Look, look who we got in the house. <laughs> Don't get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling you better hair. Okay, so here we got Ruben, we got Renee, everybody's happy. I hope this energy extends into your kitchens and you make some food caught with, caught with love. My hair, your hair was caught on me. <laughs> caught with love, made with love. Um, I don't remember what I wanted to say, but what I wanted to say is that it's this easy to satisfy, fortify, nurture yourselves. Please, do you know, Definitely make the best choice whenever possible, like Jada was saying, and get your greens on because this is preventative medicine. And I seriously love you guys, and I will see you soon.